What is up guys and welcome back to another YouTube tutorial. My name is Moabi and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to share folders on your server. File sharing is also useful if you have a lot of clients on your network and you want to share files to all of them simultaneously. It helps you to set up a share folder on your server and then all your clients can be able to access that folder using an IP address or the name of the server. There are many ways to share a folder on a server. You can use services such as file and storage services from your server manager, or you can use the file explorer to create a share folder for your clients. And in this video, I will be using the file explorer. So let's minimize the server manager and then click on file explorer. And in your file explorer, all you have to do now is decide where you want to create the share folder. So I'm going to click on this PC and then click on local disk C. This is where my Windows Server operating system is installed. And now I'm going to create my share folder from my local disk C directory. So let's click on home and then click on new folder. Give your new folder a name. After you give your folder a name, now it's time to share the folder. So highlight your folder and then right click on your folder. Then click on properties. In your properties window, let's click on sharing. And under sharing, we are going to be focused on advanced sharing. Now in the advanced sharing window, you will see a checkbox with the label share this folder. Let's click on that. And once you click the share this folder checkbox, you will see settings. And under settings, you will see share name. This share name just means that this is the name of the folder on your network. So if you change this share name, it won't change the folder name, but instead it will change only the share name. So my folder name is share folder and my share name, I'm going to add everyone. The reason for this, I want you guys to take note that this is my folder and this will now be my share folder name on my network. You can leave the share name as it is if you don't want to change it. But for this tutorial, I wanted to show you guys the changes that take place when you change your share name. So now let's click on permissions. And under permissions, you will see the group name everyone. This group just means that anyone that is connected to your network will have the following permissions to access the share folder. So for this tutorial, I'm going to leave the permissions for everyone as default. I'm not going to allow the group to change or to have full control of the folder. I just want them to be able to read the contents of what is inside the share folder. So let's click OK. And now click Apply. Before we continue, I just wanted to let you guys know that you can choose the number of users that can access the folder at the same time. So for now, I'm going to leave the number as default. If you want to, you can change this number of users that can access this folder. And then if this number is reached, anyone that tries to access the folder after the number is reached, they will not have access to the folder. So I will leave it as default for now. And going back to permissions, we will talk more about adding specific groups and users to our permissions and giving them certain permissions to access this share folder. So for this tutorial, I just wanted to focus on the everyone group and that group being able to only read information from a share folder instead of changing the contents or modifying the contents of the share folder. So for now, I'm going to leave the everyone group with its default permissions. So click OK and then click OK once you're done. Let's click on the security tab and under security, you will see groups and usernames that have access to the share folder. I'm going to click on edit and now in the security tab, I want us to add the everyone group. So click on add. After you click the add button, you will see the select users, computers, service accounts or groups window. And in this window, we are going to type in the group everyone. Once you're done, click check names. And now this security window will look for the everyone group from our domain. Once there's a line underneath your group, let's click on OK. Once your everyone group is added, you will note that certain permissions are already selected for your everyone group, like your read and execute, list folder contents, and read. These three permissions are already allowed by default. And if you want to, you can allow users to write into the share folder, modify the folder, or have full control of the folder. But for this tutorial, 
I'm going to leave everything as default because I wanted to show you guys how to create a basic share folder for your clients. So in the next coming few videos, we will play around with permissions and see how the permissions affect users and groups alike. So for now, I'm going to leave everything as default and then click apply. Click on OK. And now let's add content inside our share folder. So I'm going to close this and then open my share folder. And now I want you guys to right click on any white space within your share folder directory. Select new and then select folder. I'm going to name this folder softwares. And then let's create a text document. Give the text document a name. I'm going to name mine index. Alrighty guys, now that we have shared a folder and a file within our share folder, let's have a look at the share folder from our Windows 10 clients. So I'm going to test the share folder using my home-vm2 Windows 10 virtual machine. Alrighty guys, now that I'm in my home-vm2 virtual machine, the reason why I'm using this virtual machine is because in a previous video, we removed it from our domain. So this means that this computer doesn't have access to resources shared on our domain. I'm going to show you guys the details of this computer. Let's click on our start menu and then click settings. Under settings, let's click on system. And in your system window, on your far left, scroll down and look for about. Once you click about, you will see device specification. And under device specification, you will see device name as home-vm2. Because this computer is not part of a domain, the full device name will not be visible just below device name. I will show you this once we go to our Windows 10 computer that is joined to our domain. So for now, let's click on home. And now let's click on accounts. And under accounts, let's focus on access, work or school. After the application is done loading, you know that there is no domain connected to our computer. So I can confirm that this computer is not part of our domain. Now let's go ahead and have a look at the share folder. So close settings. To access the share folder, let's right click on our start menu. Then click run. And now for us to access the share folder, all you have to do is type in two backward slashes. This character is normally found above the enter key. And once you enter the backward slashes, all you have to do now is enter the IP address of your server. I can see the IP address of my share server. In your case, you will have to type in the IP address of your share server. Once you're done, click on OK. And because this computer is not part of our domain, we need to enter the credentials of our domain administrator account or any account that has access to the share folder. So I'm going to use my domain administrator credentials, which is my username together with my domain name and also my password. All right, guys, once I enter my details, now you will note that this computer that is not part of the domain now has access to resources that are shared on our domain server. And if you take note, remember in the server, I created the folder with the name share folder. But when I shared the folder, I added everyone to the share name. And as you can see, here's the share name when you access the share folder from a different computer. So let's open this share folder for everyone. And inside, you will see the two files that we created which is our software's folder and our index. So if I try and create a new folder from the share folder, it won't allow it because the everyone group doesn't have any permission to modify or write into this folder. So let's click on new folder. We get a destination folder access denied pop-up window. And in this window, it says that you need permission to perform this action. We didn't allow our everyone group to be able to write into our folder or modify any contents of this folder. So let's click on cancel. Let's try and edit this text document. So double click the text document to open it. And now I'm going to type in my name. To save the file, click on file, then click save. And if you take a look at the path where this text file will be saved, you will note that it is being saved on our network. So I'm going to click on save. We get a pop-up window that informs us that the index text document already exists. So I'm going to click Yes. And I get an error message that says, you do not have permission to open this file. See the owner of the file or an administrator to obtain permissions. 
So you can tell that permissions play a key role, especially when it comes to sharing files on your network. So let's close this text document and click on don't save. Now I want us to jump into our Windows 10 computer that is joined to our domain. Now I've logged into my home VM1 Windows 10 computer, which is joined to our domain. I want to show you guys the details of this computer. Let's click on a start menu, then click settings. Let's click on accounts. And under accounts, click on access work or school. And if you take note, this home VM1 computer is joined to my domain. Now let's click on home and then click on system. In the system window on the far left, scroll down and look for about. Under device specification, you will see device name as home VM1 and below the device name, because this computer is part of a domain, we will see full device name with the computer name and our full domain name. My home-vm2 virtual machine is not part of a domain and it didn't have the full device name. But my home VM1 has a full device name because it is connected to my domain. So now that I can confirm that this computer is part of a domain, let's try and access the share folder and see the difference. Let's close this. And now I'm going to click on the search tab and type in run. I'm going to open the run application and then type in your IP address. Remember two backward slashes followed by the IP address of a share server. Once you're done, let's click on OK. And now if you notice that if I try to access the share folder with a domain joint client, it doesn't require any credentials. Let's click on our share folder everyone. Open it and then let's try and see if domain join clients can make changes to this folder. Remember, I only added the everyone group and I didn't change any settings from that group. So this means that even this user from the domain shouldn't be able to create a folder, modify any files on the share folder, not delete or change any folder or file from the share folder. So let's click on home and then click on new folder. The domain account will also need permissions in order to make changes to this folder. The reason for this is because I'm using a regular account, which is not an administrator account from my domain. And so let's click on cancel. Now, one last thing before we leave, I want to see if we can copy this index file from our share folder to our desktop on our Windows 10 machine. So highlight the text document and then right click and then click on copy. Then go to your desktop and then right click anywhere and then click on paste. So I am allowed to copy files from the share folder, but I can't modify the files, nor can I add files to the share folder. And with that being said, that concludes our video for today. I wanted to show you guys the most basic way to share folders and files on your server. On the next video, I'll be focusing on permissions to allow certain groups to be able to copy files into your share folder or create folders and files inside your share folder. Those users or groups can be allowed to delete, modify or write into the share folder. And once we create those permissions, I will be using different computers so that we can see the different permissions that apply to each computer, whether domain joint or not. And that is it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment in the comment section below, like and share the video with a friend or two. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more. I will see you guys on the next video. And remember, each one teacher.